All right, guys, welcome to the Game Bread Bare Knuckle MMA press conference here live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Let's welcome first to the stage the boss of Game Bread Bare Knuckle MMA, the original BMF, a future UFC Hall of Famer, Jorge Masvidal. A little clap or a cheer, something, a little something out here. <laughs> a little something. <laughs> Hello, everybody. All right, all right. One half of the main event, a uh, former UFC heavyweight champion, nine victories, win streak in the UFC. Uh, also, I hear Bertie told me one of the best singers at American Top Team, Junior Dos Santos. Bring him up to the stage. And then the other half of the main event in Jacksonville, Florida, also former UFC heavyweight champion, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Fariso Verdum to the stage. All right, all right, guys. We'll open it up very soon, guys, to all media here in person, but uh, let's uh, take care of some business. Guys, Friday, September 8th, a historic event live from Jacksonville, Florida, Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena. A historic event, uh, 15 years in the making, historic rematch of two of the greatest heavyweights of all time. But this time, um, Jorge, we are excited about, we're gonna take the gloves off of these two fighters. We've been talking about it. How excited are we, um, gloves off, between Dos Santos and Verdun? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I grew up watching these guys, and, um, and just knowing when they came in, they were like the next generation of heavyweights. You know, they were big guys that were athletic. They could wrestle. They could strike. They could do jujitsu, And um, it, they, they were like the next wave of the big guy that could really, really move, and both of them got sick power, right? So when we were thinking, what's the most violent fight that we could possibly put together? Well, JDS is a free agent. He won't be for long, and so is Verdum. He won't be a free agent for long either. We got to make this happen right now, you know. And that's what we were trying to do: is just get together a fight that people would say, "Holy smokes, I'm going to watch that." You know, no matter if you've been a new fan of the game or 20 years in the game, there's no way you're not watching this fight if you know about it, especially to be a bare knuckle. Absolutely, guys. Well, let's give a real quick shout out to Nerd Focus Energy Drink, a major sponsor here for Game Bread Bare Knuckle. Uh, Junior, real quick question to you. Uh, viral little post from Jorge. A uh, little sign in bonus with straight cash. That's something new to the uh, fight game a little bit. Yeah, man. I got to the gym. It was full of cash on top of the bank. I said, whoa, that's a nice thing. <laughs> and, uh, well, yeah, I'm just very excited. You know, it's a uh, mass without a dream. With all the team, is doing a great, great job on uh, Game Bread by Knuckle. And we are entertaining people, you know, we are here to entertain people, wants to see that, like that bare knuckle thing that's growing a lot. So uh, we are here for it, you know, to put on a good show. Absolutely. Uh, Mauricio, quick question for you. 15 years, um, you were a heavy favor, remember that Junior was a, a rising, ascending uh, prospect. He gets the win on you. How bad did you want this rematch? Uh, you know, you get wins over Feed, or you have wins over Stipe Miocic. How bad did you want this rematch? It took you 15 years, but how excited are you for this opportunity against Junior Dos Santos? Yes, I'm mean, very excited, you know, because um, not about the past, man. The past is the past, and uh, now is the present. Now, uh, this is the more important for me, and I'm very happy for everything now in my life happened. And I'm happy for this fight. When the guys invite me, I'm very excited. I just say, Ali, please send me the contract. I love the idea. There are no gloves. This is amazing. And this fight will be uh, the history for sure. Absolutely. All right, guys, let's open it up. Guys, by the way, tickets are on sale right now at Ticketmaster.com. Make sure you get your tickets live Friday, September 8th. Let's open it up for the esteemed media. First question? There we go. Jones, Jones Jr. in and everything else, but what does it mean to you, back to Florida, one of your teammates at ATT, two heavyweight legends of the UFC, and just put it to words, you get to hold the event, you're the one promoting it. Um, no, uncomparable for me, this fight to any other fight, the magnitude of this fight, these guys are both highly dangerous, and I still believe these guys are in the top five of their weight class right now in the world, you know? Um, the Roy Jones fight was, was more of a... Let's see what happens against a younger MMA guy. Um, but this fight here, I know what happens. Nothing but violence. You know, it's going to end and it's going to start violent and bloody. And shit, I can't wait to see it, man. And then for Junior Dos Santos, I think a lot of 
fans, the very first time they saw you was the night that you beat Verdum. Can you put into words what that victory meant for your entire career as it really kicked you off to become a star? Well, that was probably one of, uh, if not the most important fight of my career. Uh, uh, yeah, it's in the second place because <laughs> uh, it's between that fight and the fight uh, I got the, the title, you know, the, those are the most important, for, of course, fights of my career because I, I was making my debut in the biggest show in the world, you know, UFC, MMA show, and against a, a legend of the, 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 the sport already, you know, a guy who was supposed to fight for the title, and I went there and I was able to get out with the victory, and that was just amazing, you know, As suddenly uh, the, the world started to talk about, about my name, and that was something very special, you know, and like it is today, you know, to be here again, to having, uh, to fight uh, Verdun again. And then finally for Verdun, um, obviously you fought many places, been part of big shows, big events. Uh, can you talk about just what does this feel like knowing, you know, it's going to be bare knuckle, it's going to be a little different than a lot of things you've done before? Yes, I want to ask um, to respond in Portuguese, okay? Just give the microphone for my translator, official translator, please. É, eu já eu lutei pelo mundo inteiro em vários eventos, né? Como eu falei antes, eu estou muito feliz de ter essa oportunidade de tantos lutadores no mundo, né? E eles me convidarem mais uma vez. Eu sei que tem uma história, mas é é muito importante, como eu falei antes, né? A, a felicidade que eu estou de poder ter essa oportunidade mais uma vez e fazer uma grande luta aí com, com o Cigano. Sim, eu estou muito feliz. Vocês podem me ouvir? Não. Sim, eu estou muito feliz. Como você disse, eu tive a chance de lutar em muitos lugares ao redor do mundo e eu fui convidado para essa promoção. Eu sei que vai ser um pouco diferente, mas sim, eu estou muito feliz por essa chance de lutar em outro grande campeão. <coughs> And I know this fight's going to be amazing. É, o que chamou atenção quando eu assinei o contrato foi o sem luva, né? Voltar às origens do verdadeiro vale tudo. Então isso me chamou muita atenção porque eu sempre quis lutar dessa maneira, né? Estilo estilo vale tudo, né? Sem as luvas, né? Por isso que hoje eu tenho uma uma boa proposta para o evento hoje. What kept my my attention was because of its bare knuckle, it's the original vale tudo, and I always want to do it. So yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for this fight because of that. Uh, for Junior and Fabricio, I'm curious to know who you guys think the rules here with the bare knuckle favors more. Obviously, Fabricio, you know, open no gloves, grappling. I'm sure that helps. And Junior, I'm sure you know you get to hit a little harder without those gloves on. So who do you guys think it favors more? Junior, you can go first. Well, uh, there's the, the both sides, you know, of the the, the, the story. But uh, it's good for the, the grappling side of the fight, you know, it's good also as well for the, the, the striking part of the, the, the fight. Of course, you know, we for sure, the, 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 the right thing is that we're going to see much more blood. <laughs> and, you know, at the beginning I was kind of struggling, you know, to, to really fight uh, bare knuckle and things like that. But then uh, I went to watch some fights and really understand what's going on, uh, you know, on this thing. And there's not... There's not many things different, you know, than the than the regular the, the fight with the gloves. So the the big the, the biggest difference is that uh, you gotta be careful to not just break your hands, <laughs> and for sure it's gonna be much more blood. So I, I think you know it's a great opportunity to be fighting Verdun again, and probably it's the last time we're gonna be facing each other. So why not to do on the old style, right? Yeah. Eu penso que é uma grande oportunidade de, de lutar sem as luvas, por isso que a, a minha proposta né, para o evento, nada pessoal, seria com qualquer lutador que eu faria, por ter essa felicidade de lutar mais uma vez, fazer a proposta para o Masvidal de fazer um antigo vale-tudo mudando a regra, se for possível, com cabeçada, pênalti, pisão na cabeça, fazer realmente o vale-tudo de verdade, já que nós chegamos a esse ponto né, de fazer sem as luvas, eu acho muito, e acho que vai chamar muita atenção de todos os fãs para esse evento. 
So yeah, the, the biggest thing for me is fighting the original value to the old school rules. So I would like to take this opportunity to ask Masvidal if he would agree to change the rules. And for this fight, we could fight with soccer kicks, uh, headbutts, and and had anything that we, we could do, we were allowed to do back those days at the original Valitude rules. The, the thing is that we'd have to change the state because of the commission, the laws. <laughs> That's the only thing. So before I could even say yes or no, we'd have to find a state that'd say, yeah, you could soccer kick over here. And I think the only place in America that's doing that right now is Colorado. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody out there. That's correct. Any of the, yeah? <laughs> even the note. The nerds agree with me, even, bro. Come on. <laughs> now I'm fucking with y'all, bro. Listen, man, um, I wish. <laughs> We'd have to go to Japan or something like that. We'd have to leave the country. Possible. But for, for September, it'd be tight. And another one for both you guys. Um, you know, Jorge mentioned Junior that you're a free agent after this. And there's this big you know, Francis and Ganu fight looming out there for maybe next year and you know, big money attached. Do you feel like the winner here puts themselves in a very good position to potentially get that fight offered to them? Fabrizio, you can go first. Yes, no, I just think about this fight now. I don't think about uh, uh, Francis and Ganu. Just, uh, you know, I signed this fight now with my focus in this fight in uh, September 8th. That's it. Junior? Uh, well, yeah, I think uh, yeah, whatever happens after this fight, it, you know, it's going to be it's going to be good and it's going to be very welcome. And but right now it's uh, of course, you know, I have a great fight in my in front of me, you know, a, a different style of fight that everybody's excited to see. And I'm very excited too, you know, to go there and put in a good work. And what comes afterwards comes afterwards. And just last thing for me, uh, a few minutes ago, the UFC just announced a heavyweight title fight between John Jones and uh, Stipe Miocic. I'd just like to know both of your opinions on that matchup and how do you think it's going to go? Junior? Uh, I think it's going to, I think it's a great fight. You know, that's the fight to do right now. You know, John Jones, everybody knows how amazing he is. You know, Stipe Miocic also is a great guy, you know, a great, a great fighter, actually. And, um, you know, I think, I really believe, you know, it's going to be a very interesting fight, you know, for, for the heavyweight division. And, uh, and I, you know, I also believe that Miocic has great chances, you know, to, uh, to give uh, John Jones some, some hard work inside, uh, inside of the cage and maybe get that, that W. Real quick uh, question for Jorge. Um, can you expand maybe uh, next month or the next couple of months? Can game bread bare knuckle? Can we go to Colorado real soon? We got, we'll be closing out the show, the year with three more shows. We'll be in uh, England, London in October. Then in December, we'll be in Denver is the plan. It's a hundred and percent on paper, yeah, but it's pretty close. And next year we'll have 12 calendar shows. That's uh, that's a for sure. And then the year after that, we're gonna try to move to 24 shows in the year. But next year will definitely be 12 shows in the year, one show per month. And we're gonna try to keep these guys as busy as possible once they sign on. Beautiful. Jorge, you were talking about the state uh, athletic, athletic commission's uh, state rules before. Is there any specific state that you and you and the promotions have issues? to allow the, the bare knuckle MMA or even the bare knuckle boxing or whatever? There's a lot of states that uh, bare knuckle is still not legal. New York, Las Vegas, California, for example, some big states like that. So we, we got to work around that. But there's a lot of states now like Florida, Mississippi, Tennessee, Louisiana, Texas is soon uh, becoming. I think Arizona soon is also going to sign up for the bare knuckle. So there, there's a lot of states that are also allowing this type of competition. So I think it'll take time, but we'll get there. Like everything, you know, like when the UFC first got here, they had to go through the, the what do they call the jumps and hoops and bounds and all that. We got to do the same. You you just said that you are planning to have 12 cards next year, right? Yes, sir. So how many fighters do you, do you have already right now in your roster? In the roster right now, I would say off the top of my head, maybe like 70 guys that we have. You know, and we'll be... Now that we have a full schedule of 12 fights, now we could add a lot more to that roster because now we can tell 
the guys, hey, you could fight three times for us potentially next year. And so most of these fighters, that, that's, that's what they want to do, is stay active, you know, one to three fights a year minimum. Ahora aquí una pregunta. En marzo pasado, allá en tu casa en Miami, vimos cómo te retirabas y ahora eres el que estás manejando esto. ¿Cómo se vive los toros desde la barrera, desde afuera, tener que organizarlo todo, ver a los peleadores, tener más responsabilidades, porque tú tienes que asegurarte que la gente haga su trabajo y funcione? ¿Cómo se vive eso? Me encanta. Es eh, la vida que he vivido mi vida entera, 20 años profesional peleando. Yo entiendo el juego eh, de ser un eh, jugador del equipo para, para el partner mío, ser un training partner, estar en esquina, eh, competir yo mismo. Eh, he sido referí en amateur. Yo me he puesto todos los sombreros que me pueda poner en la pelea. Pero eh, además de pelear, que es mi preferido y es más natural para mí, esta es la próxima cosa que, que es lo más natural en el mundo de combate para mí, que es promover las peleas. Eh, si estoy hablando con él o con Verdum o lo que sea, eh, tenemos una conexión diferente como hemos peleado, puedo hablar con ellos, ellos me pueden decir cosas que, que quieren hacer pasar y yo les puedo decir si es verdad o si lo puedo hacer, ¿no? Y yo creo que el negocio es más fácil así. Y bueno, tengo, tengo gracias a Dios que tengo 26, 27 años en este deporte, eso también tengo un ojo para ver quién tiene talento y no. Eso es otra bendición que Dios me dio para, para el trabajo de, de promover. Fabricio, ahora para ti, por favor. Tú eres un veterano en este deporte en, y en general en, en artes marciales mixtas y en deportes de combate. ¿Qué es lo que te, te sigue pidiendo que, que sigas peleando? ¿Qué es lo que te impulsa a seguir peleando? Sí, yo siempre digo esto porque nací luchador, ¿entiendes? Yo sé, entonces cuando me hace una propuesta como esta, sin los guantes y después de estar dos años sin pelear porque me, por la opción que he tenido, ¿no? Entonces, de verdad que me gusta bastante, como te había dicho antes, que de estar contento, ¿no? Yo creo que la gente está buscando esto, ¿no? Que de estar contento, feliz con tu vida. Entonces, yo estoy feliz con mi vida ahora mismo. Entonces, por eso acepté y estoy muy motivado para el 8 de, de septiembre, que seguramente es una, una pelea para la historia. Y Junior, tú normalmente fuiste conocido como, como un striker, uno que pegaba muy duro. ¿Tú crees que tienes ventaja para este 8 de septiembre con Fabricio o tú ves la pelea 50-50 pareja? ¿Cómo lo ves tú dentro de cuando vayas a subirte a pelear con Fabricio? Ah, portuñola. <risa> Yo pienso que va a ser una, una, una buena pelea. Uh, Fabricio Verdun es muy experiente, tiene mucha, mucha, muy duro en, principalmente en, lo gra en grappling, en, uh, en jiu-jitsu, sí. Mas uh, yo estoy preparado para pelear donde fue o como en, en pie o uh, en lo piso. <ríe> Entonces, uh, uh, lo, lo más importante es que vaya a ser una, una gran pelea para todos se ver, asistir. Gracias. <ríe> All right, we're going to do two more guys, then we're going to have a face off, then we can have a one on ones. The Spanish interaction. Basically, he was asking us some questions about cryptocurrency and the stock market. <laughs> and um, we, for Vidisho, had a different opinion as to me and uh, JDS. So hopefully, somebody makes a lot of money on those <laughs> bets. <laughs> Jorge, just down here. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be bringing Game Bread Boxer, Bare Knuckle Boxing, to the UK, to London. Yes, Can you elaborate a little bit about why you chose to? to bring it to London, and, and do you have a main event in mind? I think there, there's, as a, it, when I was a fighter, there was places in my mind that I wanted to fight. Madison Square Garden, um, numerous places here in Vegas, numerous arena, the Mandalay Bay, the MGM Grand. Uh, as a promoter, there's many places I, I want to promote at. In England's one of them, Brazil's one of them. But places where, where fighting is engraved in the culture. England is huge on fighting. They've been selling out arenas there for as long as I could remember. Brazil's the same thing. It's another place that's been selling out. Well, they invented the sport and they've been selling out there. So going to places like this as a promoter is 100% on the bucket list. Do you have a main event in mind at the we, moment? No, we were, where's, uh, where's my guy at? Where's Dean Big, at? big. Dean. The big, big Dean tour, where you at? Oh, he disappeared, but the, <laughs> Main event is very close to finally say. I wanted to see if maybe I would have looked up and would have said I could announce it, you know. But um, I can't find his ass, man. He disappeared on me. We're very close to a big main event. One, of the, one half of the main event is from England. 
maybe that's saying too much already, but maybe within the coming weeks we'll release it to the public already. And do you see London as somewhere that you could perhaps go quite regularly? Um, I, of course, in my heart, I'm super optimistic. I think we're going to settle out and go there every year. But uh, we got to go and check, you know, we got to cross that bridge. But I think so. Last one, guys. Drinks are free in the back. So y'all enjoy yourselves. Hey, thank the Presto for coming out. Thank all of you, man. Appreciate it. He didn't have no questions over there, man. You shy today, bro? You shy? No, you gotta ask now. You shy, man. Yeah, that, yeah, that English fire you said in the main event. Uh huh. Does his name rhyme with Schmarren Bill? <laughs> no, it rhymes with uh, <laughs> Full Whaling. Man, this guy's fucking. <laughs> fucking, who brought? He kicked this guy out, man. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, very good guesses. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not even gonna, I'm gonna plead the fifth. I know you don't know what that means in England, but here we got this law called plead the fifth. I don't have to answer your questions. Okay.